Hello. In this lesson, we will give you tips and resources for using Westlaw for topic selection and development. Before we get into the substantive part of the lecture, I do want to point out new landing page for Westlaw and Thomson Reuters content. It is lawschool.thomsonreuters.com or lawschool.tr.com. There you will find all of the products your school currently subscribes to, including TWEN. And just an FYI, in addition to recording this particular lesson and posting it to the Westlaw Resources TWEN site at your school, I've also posted an electronic version of the 2019 Law Review and Journal Production Guide. In that guide, there are a number of tips for selecting topics and for developing those topics. I'm only going to touch on some of those tips today in this short lesson, but you may want to review the e-guide to uh, get some additional tips. Finally, I do want to point out with respect to getting help when you are using Westlaw, Hopefully you know this already, but when you're using Westlaw Edge, if you scroll to the bottom of the screen, you always have access 24 seven to reference attorneys. You could call them at 800-REF-ATTY, or you could click the link for live chat where you can establish an instant messenger session with them. Either way, it's a really good resource for you to use. It's free, free in any firm that has Westlaw, as well as law school, but they're gonna save you time and frustration and eventually money. Now, topic selection. Really, with respect to topic selection, it doesn't matter where you get the idea as long as you get an idea. And as I said a few minutes ago, I wanted to just show you some of the tips out there that Westlaw, uh, some of the tips, I should say, for using Westlaw to get that, that idea. First and foremost, from the homepage, you click into cases. You're gonna be able to drill into cases by jurisdiction or topic. So if you are interested in a particular topic, you could see what the most recent cases are on that particular subject. Here, I've drilled into civil rights cases. It's gonna list them in reverse chronological order, but, an even better tip, and one that might be hard to see, on the screen, I actually ran a search and I typed date parentheses 2019. And by doing that, I've gotten all of the cases from this year on that particular subject. In addition, instead of sorting these by relevance, I've asked Westlaw to sort them by date. So I can quickly go through the list and see if anything, any issue pops up. I mean, if I'm writing a, a, a case note, I could look and see if there's any new cases on point or even just generically, is there an issue that speaks to me for this particular uh, assignment for selecting this particular topic? Also wanted to point out that you still have your filtering functionality when you run a search like this. Another search you could run, and this works in any case law database, this particular search that I'm displaying, issue or question or matter, same grammatical sentence as the phrase first impression or novel and date 2019, will generate a list of cases that appeared before the U.S. Court of Appeals and were cases of first impression. That's usually a pretty good approach to take when trying to sort of glean some ideas for, for topics. And my favorite one, circuit splits. You talk about a fertile area uh, for, for comment purposes, uh, circuit splits such as the search I'm running here, court or circuit, same sentence as issue or question or matter, same sentence as split and date 2019. That's gonna give me 
every case in the U.S. Court of Appeals from 2019 that mentioned the concept of a circuit split. We also have current awareness databases that will keep you current. And these current awareness databases are arranged by jurisdiction as well as topic. So from secondary sources, if you open up your secondary sources link, on the right hand side under tools and resources, there will be a link for Westlaw bulletins and topical highlights. Click there and you'll see, as I mentioned previously, our topical highlights are at the top and our jurisdictional highlights, if you will, are towards the bottom. So if to take a look at the most recent Supreme Court decisions, I just open up Supreme Court Bulletin and I can quickly scan the list to see if anything jumps out at me. You know, I can tell by the topic and that first line if there's something that might be of interest to me that bears further uh, further reading. And if I do click on any one of these, I get a nice summary of that particular that particular activity. Final place to go to get some ideas for topics is practical law. Now practical law is an excellent resource tool, particularly for upper class students, because it's a legal know-how tool. We sort of think of practical law as having an expert guiding us through various transactional tasks or litigation based activities, but practical law can also be used for topic selection purposes. So from the practical law homepage, if you click resource types, that second tab there on the screen and select legal updates, these are the practice areas where you can stay current with what is going on with respect to cases, uh, legislative activity or administrative agency decisions. I selected intellectual property and these are automatically listed by date. You'll see the sort should default to date. And you know, we've got quite a bit in here, but again, you could quickly go through this particular list and you'll see one, I sort of drafted this lecture a couple of months back, but when I did a real recent event in Maine was that uh, your governor signed a new internet privacy law. Now, topic development. Okay, so you've gotten your topic, you've run an initial preemption check, you're good there. How do I develop my topic? Well, the first tip I wanted to give you as an upper class student is to navigate away from the tendency of running a global search. Last year, that probably yielded really good results, right? You, you simply type your search, select your jurisdiction, and let Westlaw retrieve content from the categories listed in these first two columns right here. Everything from cases and arbitration materials to briefs and trial court documents. As a law review student, you will have to be much more precise. Furthermore, as a law review student, you may want to sort of uh, become familiar with some of the other content that is not searched as part of a global search. For example, news, that's not part of your global search. Legislative history, if you're writing a statutory note, not part of it. Oral arguments, we provide transcripts of oral arguments. You know, that might come into play for your uh, case note. I like in particular news. I think it's a real good resource to use to develop a topic because in addition to providing you with national and international newspapers, it provides you with lay magazines and uh, journals. It provides you with TV and radio transcripts as well as congressional testimony. So it's a really good resource for you to use. This search that you'll see on the screen, I actually am looking to get some good news stories that deal with whether or not uh, including a citizenship question on the 
2020 census is constitutional that yielded newspaper articles from around the world, including LA Times, Huffington Post, Washington Post, Daily Beast, etc. Just a real good way of filling out your 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 note or comment. I do want to mention that you should be aware of the productivity tools already on Westlaw, the ability to folder, which is really essential, highlighting and copying quotes in context. Remember, when you copy in context, it will give you that quote in blue book format. But there are some new ones that you may not be aware of, including key site inline flags, as well as the ability to view the document in full screen. So if I click full screen, it will hide all of the items other than the text of the document, giving you more real estate to quickly go through and read a document. I do want to spend another second on inline flags because these are really important. You'll never have an excuse anymore for citing a part of a document that is no longer good because you can clearly see the red flags or the orange implicitly overruled markers when you're going through cases, briefs, secondary sources, etc. Another really good tip when developing a note or comment, if you're relying on a case and your case has filings associated with it, make sure you look at those filings. Because what we'll do here is collect all of the pleadings, motions, memos, and appellate briefs associated with that case. Rather than just relying on the court's decision, this gives you an ability to read the arguments both sides made before the court rendered its decision. Real, again, another real good way of developing flavor and depth to your particular note or comment. Final link that I wanted you to be aware of when writing your case note in particular is the table of authorities link. If you click table of authorities, it'll give you an alphabetical list of every case that your court relied upon when they wrote the decision. So that's something you should certainly do each and every time you retrieve a case that's gonna be important, uh, particularly obviously for your case note. I do want to just quickly review head notes because I think these sort of get ignored and they are really an easy way for you to develop and retrieve additional relevant cases on your subject. Remember, head notes serve three purposes for you. One, they provide a summary of every issue in your case. Two, I can clearly see how many cases cited to my case for that particular point of law. Here I'm looking at O'Brien. Issue number four is a labor and employment issue, basically dealing with whether or not a personnel manual can form the basis of an employment contract. There are 13 cases that that cited to O'Brien for that issue. There are 872 documents total that have cited to O'Brien, but 13 were cases that cited to O'Brien for this particular point of law. Now, the third thing that a head note will do, every head note has been classified somewhere in the West topic and key number system. So if this were the issue I were researching for my note or comment, with one click, I could get every case out there classified to that particular point of law. Just a real nice and easy way of getting relevant documents. Now, folders. Obviously, you've been introduced to them. They become particularly important for the law review researcher. Three reasons. One, folders on Westlaw can be shared. You can share them with any uh, colleague, whether it is a another student or a faculty member. Two, folders on Westlaw will automatically update the validity of your documents, whether they are cases, statutes, or regs. And three, there's a concept called folder analysis, which I'll get into in a little bit more detail. First, the sharing icon. That's going to be the third icon from the left on that browsing bar. When you click on that, 
it gives you an ability to name students or faculty members or, or, or search for them, I should say. And once you find them, you can define what level of access they have. So if I wanted to share this with you, I could make you a contributor, which means you could add or remove items from this folder, or I could just simply make you a, an observer where you could just read what I've added to the folder. Key site flags. In a folder, they do not remain stagnant, and this is huge. I mean, one of the cases on the screen is from the California Mid-Level Appeals Court. If that case got reversed next week, that flag would change automatically to red. On Westlaw, you do not need to go to a folder, open an item, only to find it has now been changed from a yellow to a red flag. We do that work for you automatically. The final thing I wanted to point out was folder analysis. And this is a safety net. This is really, really cool. Based on the documents I've added to this folder, Westlaw is breaking down my issues and listing them. We actually have, looks like uh, two, four, five different distinct issues. And for the first issue, civil liability of psychiatrists arising out of patients' violent conduct, I do have six cases, statutes, regs, secondary sources that speak to that issue, but Westlaw is recommending an additional 10 cases, two statutes, and 10 secondary sources. So this is a way for you to answer the question, have I gotten everything I need to satisfy that my research or when when am I done? I mean, that's the hardest question oftentimes a legal researcher has. How do I know I'm done? This is going to be what you'd use. It's a really 